Imagine a time not so long ago when the black velvet darkness of the New Mexico night was lit only by candles and lanterns. It may sound more romantic, but everyone had to work very hard to survive. In 1935, Congress passed the Rural Electrification Act and established the Rural Electrification Administration, REA. At that time, fewer than 11 out of every 100 farms in America had electricity. In 1939, Marcelino Martinez of Cuesta and W.P. Cater of Cerro organized to bring the first frail power lines and low-cost electricity to farms, ranches, and villages around Taos. The electric light bulb began to replace the kerosene lamp. Martinez and Cater joined with a group from Eagle's Nest to form Eagle's Nest Electric Cooperative, which was intended to serve 112 customers. The plan was to distribute power to the Eagle's Nest, Red River, Molly Corp, Cuesta, Cerro, Costilla, and Garcia, Colorado areas. But organizers discovered that they needed more communities to get involved in order to continue to operate as a cooperative. They approached the community of Taos, which already had its own privately owned system. Taos merchants and community leaders wanted to see electricity in rural homes and felt it would be good business all around. The first board of directors was formed. There were seven board of trustees, Charles Gallagher, E.A. Swanson, William Miller, J.N. Young, F.E. Munden, W.P. Cater, and Marcelino Martinez. When it was decided to go ahead, the group found itself with another more serious problem where to get the power from. It was possible to purchase a generating plant, however, that was too expensive. All this was taking place during World War II, and so plants had to be discarded for a time. Eventually, the cooperative was finalized and lines began reaching out from Taos into the valleys and over the mountains. The lights came on in rural northern New Mexico after the war ended in 1944. For many in this area, it was the first time they had ever experienced electricity in their homes. And to a few like Martinez, the new lines permitted them to turn off expensive and inefficient generators. The first year, the cooperative had 618 customers and there were 58 miles of line. The consumers paid an average of 10.5 cents a kW hour, the cooperative rose $54,000, and the plant was valued at about $215,000. This is a far cry from our 2001 comparative statistical data at 25,000 consumers, a little over 2,000 miles of line. Today, our residential rate is a little lower at 7 to 7 cents per kW hour. The cooperative has grossed over $22 million in 2001, and our total plant investment is about $65.5 million. At the annual meeting of Kit Carson Electric Cooperative in October of 1947, a motion was made to raise the number of board members from seven to nine to represent the more populated areas and a motion was passed unanimously by the 145 members in attendance. The crossroads was reached in 1967 when some private interest groups wanted to limit the growth of rural electric programs Others wanted to see the co-ops turn over to profit-making electric companies. In many states, electric cooperatives needed to expand and were in a better financial position to move into the private money market for financing. Luckily, Congress was willing to continue rural electrification programs and permit a new financing plan that would establish a credit system patterned after the successful farm credit system. This plan would include the establishment of a federal bank, now CoBank, which would permit the use of private monies in low interest rates. REA loans would still be available for cooperatives in poorer areas. By the late 1970s, about 99 out of 100 farms in America had been electrified, and half of those were served by REA-financed electric systems. The REA loans permitted the rural electric companies to extend electric services to 98% of the rural areas of the nation. Bringing electricity to rural population created an unprecedented prosperity. Here were millions of people who in a brief 30 years suddenly were buying appliances and with electricity earning more money for their labors. For the average rural electric consumer of the late 60s, it was not enough to have just a light bulb. They wanted all the benefits of electricity and many of the lines that powered the light bulb would not permit the use of many labor-saving electric appliances. Since then, cooperatives like Kit Carson Electric have become very attractive to investor-owned utilities. But do we need them? The infrastructure is now in place and most rural areas and services are reliable. Taos now offers much of the same comforts, opportunities, and technologies as consumers enjoy in the big cities. In the 1990s, the electric deregulation movement brought unprecedented changes to the utility industry. Cooperatives like Kit Carson Electric, who have long served their members, saw the lines between utility services become blurred, and traditionally integrated products and services have become unbundled and subject to competition. Congress has been forced to look into a deregulatory bill and would allow other power suppliers to sell power through the members' lines. 
Advocates of deregulation say that the customer will have a choice, but this may not be completely true. Competition might be eliminated if electric power generation capacity is largely controlled by a few huge corporations and stunt the growth of competitive markets. Studies show that small businesses, residential, rural, and low-income consumers will not benefit from deregulation. In 1996, state deregulation in California cost businesses and residents $10.9 billion more in energy sales when out-of-state suppliers raised their prices. In 1998, at the annual meeting, the current board was instructed by the membership to explore the possibility of diversifying into like businesses or businesses that were, at that time, not meeting the needs of the membership. In 2001, the board was expanded to 11 members due to the growth of the co-op service area. The new board is as follows. President Jerry Smith, Vice President Tim Cottom, Secretary Tim Martinez, Treasurer Michael Arueo, Ambrose Mascarenas, Manuel Medina, Arthur Rodarte, Juan Valdez, Carlos Cisneros, Virgilio Martinez, Leroy Gonzalez. With the new board and the member mandate, the work begun. The old Kit Carson building goes down and a new Kit Carson facility is constructed. 25,000 additional spaces included, a 10,000 square foot building to help provide economic development to Taos County, and the building includes all new offices, an in-house building room, two efficiencies to house standby employees, and plenty of space for expansion. The cooperative expanded its hours from 8 hours a day to 11 hours a day to meet the customer's needs, and set up satellite offices in all but five of the districts it serves. Outreach programs begin with the Public Relations Department to keep its members informed of the projects and programs that it offered. In keeping with our mission to deliver exceptional customer service with efficiency, professionalism, and accountability, and to dedicate ourselves to develop sustainable economic opportunities which benefit our service communities. Kit Carson Electric created three divisions to offer cooperative members different services. Along with electrical services, it now offers internet services, telecommunication services, and propane services. Kit Carson Electric provides job for 87 people. Kit Carson Propane employs 13, and Kit Carson Internet employs four. 95% of our employees come from our own territory, and we are the second largest electric co-op in the state of New Mexico in numbers of consumers and carry a load of 68 to 70 megawatts. Kit Carson Electric Cooperative expanded into telecommunications to offer a range of services to the community. With the telecommunications is the Internet Division. Kit Carson Internet has been in business since January of 2000 and now has approximately 3,000 users. The network is built on commercial-grade server components designed for continuous use. Kit Carson Internet provides local dial-up access to all of its members in their service territory. We supply digital 56K modems at all locations to guarantee customers the fastest possible connection. Our goal is to provide the highest quality service for the best price. Kit Carson Propane sold its first 1,000 gallons of propane in October of 2000. It now serves approximately 2,000 consumers including Taos, Colfax, and Rua Riva counties. The propane division has had its propane prices fixed at 99 cents per gallon since it opened in November of 2000. The propane division offered a fixed rate, metered services, compliance upgrade financing, and safety first philosophy to its members, also owned by those we serve. Concerned about clean economic development in Taos, the co-op in collaboration with the Taos Business Alliance and other local agencies helped to create more jobs for its citizens. Kit Carson built an addition to its facility for a call center that is now occupied by Penco, a collection agency out of Philadelphia. The facility now currently employs 190 people and will eventually employ up to 300 people. Also interested in preserving a healthy environment, Kit Carson Electric is the first New Mexico cooperative offering green power options to its members. Kit Carson Electric Co-op offers 100 kWh blocks of wind-generated energy to consumers who prefer to use alternative energy. In cooperation with the Dark Skies campaign, Kit Carson Electric has shielded 30 Taos County lights in an effort to educate residents about light pollution. Kit Carson website. If you'd rather push a button and go online than get in your vehicle and drive to town, you can connect to the latest information about Kit Carson Electric Cooperative at our website, www.kitcarson.com. The homepage offers online subscription, technical support, Pancro applications for the new call center, rates and services, customer websites, a monthly newsletter with news about department functions and planned outages, and information about products, appliances, and special programs. Luis Reyes Jr., Chief Executive Officer of the Co-op says, At Kit Carson, we are very interested in helping the community and contributing to the market that supports them. We want to be a good neighbor and benefit the community. 
The co-op special programs and services include scholarship funds for college-bound seniors, government in action youth tour project to Washington, D.C., a community education project, energy analysis, security light rentals, tree and brush clearing, and a safe haven program for community members. We also provide public access computers at our main office. Kit Carson also mails out Enchantment, the voice of New Mexico's rural electrical cooperatives, to all its members, as well as a member newsletter. Kit Carson saves our members money. While the cost of living is going up, rates at Kit Carson Electric are going down. Through operational efficiencies and hard work, the cooperative was able to lower rates to its members by 24% within two years. Rate decreases are feasible because of lower power costs and continued efforts to make overall operations more efficient. Co-op members have realized a savings of about $2 million to date. Kit Carson Electric will finance up to $1,000 on a computer for a customer in good standing. Combined with our new internet services, more and more of our customers are now cruising the information highway. Kit Carson is always looking at new products, services, and programs to help our members. Owned by those we serve, we are dedicated to keeping our rates low while providing high-quality services.